My name is Barbara Kaufman. I'm Dental Coordinator for Christian Relief Uganda. Uh, first time I came out, I was still working uh, in London and all my equipment was uh, beautiful. A lot of it was disposable. I'd come to Uganda and I wasn't surprised, but I didn't know how I could work. No power, no water. So slowly, slowly, I began to realize I could talk. So I gave oral hygiene lectures in schools and from there we built up to what you see behind me now. And now I get volunteers emailing saying I would like to come and help you. Each trip is different. I never know who is going to volunteer. Uh, on this particular trip we've got eight volunteers, a mixture of dentist, therapist, uh, dental nurse. We're going to Entebbe, Ginger, Bavuma Island and Iganga. Our mission statement is that we're offering pain relief clinics in the rural areas and that includes sometimes prisons, sometimes an island, uh, deep in the villages, anywhere where there are no dental services. We're here at Reach Out Orphanage School in Munyonyo. Today we're hoping to check all the children which could be as many as 200 and some of the staff which will be around 10. I'm Dr. Daniel Nkata, the founder of Reach Out Village Ministries and we operate schools and churches and this is one of the schools where we have over 240 children. Children very often complain about their tooth conditions and we don't know what to do. Some of them may not have seen any dental doctor because dental services in Uganda are very, very costly very expensive. This is a great opportunity to have you here to help us with the dentist. I think this is the first time. We have some chairs that have been especially designed by Dente, they're folding chairs, and they've made sure that they weigh 23 kilos, which is the size and weight of a suitcase. We bring everything with us in the way of local anaesthetic and needles and gloves, but we have built up a kit now and we leave it here in the country of forceps, mirror, probe, tweezers, and all the stainless steel equipment that we need. We checked with the World Health Organization that uh, the sterilization crystals we use are uh, strong enough to kill the, the bugs out here. The staff all double glove, two pairs of gloves, to protect themselves. There's all kinds of diseases out here. HIV is one, hepatitis, tuberculosis, many, many different kinds. Some have had treatment and some probably will never have seen a dentist, so it's going to be very interesting. In this particular surgery that we've set up, there is no water, no running water and no power, so we can't operate a drill. So we are limited uh, in the resources that we can do, but we are promoting a pain relief clinic. So we're not doing full mouth rehabilitation, we are relieving pain. Yeah, my first patient came and he um, complained of pain from a lower right molar tooth and when I looked the tooth was perfectly healthy, nothing wrong with the tool. So I had to actually check with one of the um, Ugandan dentists just to translate and make sure we know what the problem is. Um, and he actually just had sensitivity on that tooth. So we just sorted it out with some desensitising paste, high fluoride paste which will help. Um, but at the same time by looking he actually had a cavity on his front tooth. Which didn't cause him any problems, he didn't really want it done but we thought while we're here we sort the the decay out and actually put a little filling in. The materials we have, they're not designed for this sort of firm place, but they actually cope very well. It takes, they have a little bit of setting time, so they don't set the, the second you've mixed them, so it's, it's okay, it's not too bad. This place is being well run uh, and, and it's been lovely to see. If we go to something government uh, based, uh, the schools or the hospitals there, it can be atrocious and you know, you're looking at 98 percent of the kids have got sort of rampant caries in their mouth and hence need loads of treatment. 
I'm Charlotte Edmondson um, from Newcastle. I'm a dental nurse. Um, I've been qualified since 2007 and I'm just here instructing the children of how to look after their mouths after having extractions. We're going to supply the orphanage with the painkillers today and um, they're going to distribute them to the children when they need them. Um, so it's about 500 milligrams of paracetamol, one every four hours and that'll help with their pain relief and they just need to understand to keep the tongue and fingers away from the hole. The kids are very grateful because it's nice lunch. You see everyone is happy, everyone is in good mood. Everyone has had their teeth checked out, others have had treatment and now they are enjoying the lunch, which is uh, something good and uh, we appreciate the work that you guys have done for us. My name is Ulega Edi. I'm studying from Richard Primary School. I went to see the dentist. The, the dentist told me that I just have a hole in my teeth. The dentist has just put what the medicine in my teeth. But I've not felt any pain. Uh, it always amazes us that um, the teeth are quite clean, um, that they don't have toothbrushes necessarily, but they can manage. They use a stick called a kapanga, and they can manage to keep their mouths clean. The reports from the dentist are that they are as good as they have seen in some of their clinics in England, so that's good. The children here at the orphanage have been looked after very well and they're uh, fed and cared for you know, on a good standard, so that's wonderful. It is uh, such a tremendous blessing because I think this is a God-given opportunity and we want to thank you all who have contributed towards this because uh, this is going to change the lives of these children. And thank you very much. Come again and again and again. <laughs> Over the years we have been able to uh, partner with some of the Ugandan dentists. Again, I can uh, email in advance and say we're coming, are you free to help us? One of the uh, Ugandan is uh, training to be a dentist and he's had a sponsorship from one of our previous volunteers um, and he's done a term and a half at Malago Dental School. The courses have to be paid for. Uh, for them, it's cost prohibitive. They would never be able to save up enough. So they apply for sponsorship. Some uh, organisations will help them. We've been able to have a private sponsor to help this particular student. Oh, it is a very, very, very fulfilling experience that we have because uh, we, we get to learn a lot about the new techniques. Barbara and her team usually come with a state-of-the-art relatively modern dentistry that we use and uh, we don't get to see a lot here because of our limited resources so it is a very fulfilling opportunity to work with CRIU, Barbara and her team in these dental missions. Alongside each clinic we run an oral hygiene session so that people are trained and they learn how to clean their teeth. Um, it's important that we leave uh, a present behind and our present is the education side of things. Oral health knowledge is improving slowly by slowly but it has not yet hit the 50% mark unfortunately. So, but every year we, 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 we see improvement. Even you'll be surprised in the modern areas the knowledge is still very limited. Yeah, I would say they know that the sweet things are dangerous for the teeth, but they will need more sensitization. Not only treatment, but uh, maybe we're thinking of uh, after they have had the treatment and after they have had lunch, maybe we'll have a, a session where we'll talk to everyone, whereby we'll explain to them uh, the dangerous foods for their teeth and how better they can look after their teeth. This morning we're in a place called Bwerenga, 
which is uh, just off the Entebbe Road and down towards Victoria, Lake Victoria. Uh, we are setting up behind me here on the veranda in front of some uh, lockups, some warehouses. And we're just making the best of what we can. We're waiting for some tables to come and we're waiting for some jerry cans of water. We have uh, a very basic setup this morning. There's no power, no water. Uh, so we have to really think about our hygiene here. This is a typically poor neighborhood. An area like this would uh, probably find most of the people in this area cannot afford to even go to a dentist once, let alone even pay for the service. So they, most, uh, they stay with the dental problems that they have from the time they are born to the time that they have people like us with the CRIU coming to provide free dental services. This morning we are conducting a, a general assessment of those that might need uh, the services that we have come to provide. My job is to do the initial assessment of the client's uh, dental needs and then I, I write what my, uh, the procedure that will most likely be taken will be done up there. We are a pain-free clinic uh, which means we cannot do all the other complicated things that we would normally refer, to the, refer them to the hospital for. I'm Elizabeth Iverson. I'm from America, but I live here now. I've been here for three years. I'm the director of a project here in this village, and I've been really, really fortunate to be hooked up with Barbara and uh, CRU to bring uh, dental services to these local people that don't have any treatment. When I see what they bring out, how they handle it, the sterilization, the, their cautiousness with HIV, hepatitis, tuberculosis, they're very, very good. I would feel good to have my own family treated here. Most of the villagers are fishermen, which is a very transient community. Unfortunately, they're the highest percentage of HIV. The local village here is 83% HIV positive. So most uh, dentists or national doctors don't want to come and treat this area, so they don't get much treatment. There are several witch doctors that do find um, that they're supported in a business here, and they do very untraditional medicine. The gentleman just told me in the chair how he appreciated, he over and over he thanked me because he had to have a tooth taken out by a witch doctor and he just used a hammer and a rock to knock his tooth out and it was horribly painful. It's very expensive to remove a tooth in Uganda, which many people cannot afford to do. So they keep on living with the a tooth which is which is paining him. We got help from your community uh, a year ago. It was in March last year, and we were very happy. And you did a very good work. It's very good, and she has helped so many people in our area here. All the volunteers that come out. Um, tell me that they find this a very challenging trip but rewarding. They are there to help the people who are unable to help themselves. Uh, we're very privileged that we are getting repeat volunteers. Someone will come out one year and then wait and come out the following year which is wonderful. It's my first time to Uganda, first time abroad and also first time on a plane. Um, it has taken me a few days to adjust. I think it's taken us all a few days to adjust. Um, but I'm loving every minute of it. Um, I feel what we're doing is really, you know, really good. Um, I think we're doing a really fantastic service for all the people here and it just makes me feel very humble. We are always looking for more volunteers, uh, for people who are prepared to come out and work in these conditions. People here are so grateful for any help they can get and so if someone could volunteer their time, uh, their resources of time or even supporting the clinic for with CRU, it's fantastic.